hey there thanks for tuning into simtech channel now if you haven't used an stm32 development board like this one before in this uh, tutorial i'm going to take you through a process of setting up an ide a free version ide so that is the stm32 uh, cube ide so stm32 cube ide is basically a merger of the the, the the old stm32 cube mx as you can see here on my screen so the stm32 cube mx basically was just a user interface uh, that gave us a very good tool to configure the pin out whatever microcontroller st you are using and then after doing the configuration you then have to generate the code then the STM32 Cube MX will normally ask you to open your project or generate the code using uh, one of the commercial IDE or an Eclipse IDE if you have it. So there are two main commercial IDE. So that is your Kel. Kel have a free version that you can use with a code size of about 32 kilobyte. And then you also have, um, what is this one? IAR compiler so that is also a very good one but then uh something happened st uh, microelectronics decided to develop an ide to integrate the stm cube mx into a one ide that you can use without going into the other commercial ide so that basically what they did so now to get that ide just type in stm32 cube ide then you take the first option here right so you select the first option it's going to take you into the stm32 basically the st website now once you are into the page you just have to scroll down into the get software now you can see these are the different versions for different operating system linux mac and windows so I'm using a Windows, you might be using a Windows as well, or Linux, whatever. So you're going to choose in these options here. So if you basically click into the drop down, you're going to see all the different versions since it was uh, released. So if you want an older version, this is where you go. Otherwise, you have to click on get the latest version. So once you click on get the latest, it will ask you uh, to accept the user agreement so you just have to accept or decline since you want it so you definitely going to accept and then the next page that going to uh, uh, open here is they just want your basic information so you need to provide your email your email and your name that's all they need and then you're going to download the file for free if you already have the registration you can just go ahead and log in with your email and password if you do not then you need to register they will probably send you a notification email that you need to confirm your email address and then you're going to download the file so i've done it already i don't have to do that so that's all you have to do then you'll be able to download the file is about 800 megabytes so make sure you have internet connection to handle uh, that download size okay okay so once you have the file downloaded all you need to do is to find it in your download folder like in my case here this is where my file is located so i extracted it because it came as a zip file so you need to extract the file out then you're going to get this exe file which is an executable file so just run the, the, the exe file you don't have to run it as administrator so you run it and then it will take you through the process of installing okay so this is just a basic uh installation of a window file so this is nothing strange here so you can change the installation location if you want to okay so it will have an st link driver already included so keep it like that and the j link driver as well then you click and install so it will just extract and install all the files for you into that folder so now it's installing the ST link server. So this installation will take a little while, a couple of minutes, depending on how fast your machine is. And you just have to be patient with it. 
all right give it time then it's completed and it is done installing so we can just click next and see what's in the next option here okay create a desktop shortcut we want that shortcut all right so there is a shortcut for our stm cube mx ide so to run it just double click your icon on the desktop and it should be able to launch the stm32 cube ide for the first time it will take some time because it's need to get all the files together okay so now when it's done booting it then uh, shows you where the default location for your project files will be located if you want to change it you have to browse and give it a folder if you don't want to you leave it like that or you uh, can also tick here to make it the default folder like i've selected mine like that and then you launch the ide now this ide use a lot of pc resources so that is your cpu and your ram so you have to ensure that you have at least the minimum requirement i'm not sure what are the minimum requirement to run this but you need to at least have 4 gig of ram a good uh, decent cpu otherwise you should be having about 8 gig of ram if you want to be a bit comfortable with this software okay so running it for the first time st microelectronics is asking you if they can collect some user data and things like that well if you want to say yes that's up to you no that's up to you so i'm gonna say ask me later then i will decide later about that okay so to start a new project you have to go here by file new and click on stm32 project now this is going to bring up uh, the stm32 target selector so this is basically where you have to choose which board you are using as you can see mine is the stm32 f334 so then you come to board selector okay from here you then need to uh enter into the information of your nuclear board so you just need to enter nucleo okay then it's going to be providing you already the option for nuclear board then you need to check in here so because mine is the f334 then i've got the f334 here so i can already then select it so if you check here when i select the board okay you click on the board it should bring a window here there it is okay then you can basically see the graphic uh, information of your board a nice picture here depicting exactly how your boards look like so if this does not look like your board then you know uh, you you selected a wrong one but the layout is basically similar so what you need to look for is this nuclear dash f334 r8 so that's the critical information you need okay then after that you can then click next all right so now come to this point here you basically just need to specify the project name so what are we doing so we're doing done led so basically we want to control an led with a button so the locations already selected you can choose the location okay i'm already using default you can if you don't want to you click there and then you have to uh, browse into your computer to find where you want to store your project all right you leave everything as is and you probably have to click on next okay but don't change anything here because you already have the latest version of the firmware package so basically just say finish right leave it here to copy only the necessary files from the library so it should only add a necessary file then you say finish initialize all peripheral with the default mode then you just say yes it will load the ioc the ioc is the graphical interface or the visual of your your ic so that is the chip here with all the pins out as it is specified so that is the ioc so okay so when the the chip configuration comes up you can see that it is already preloaded with some 
default selections here. I'm assuming this is probably the onboard program that is already loaded. So what we're going to do here, since we want to write the program from scratch, so we can just clear it. So you come on pin out and you just hit clear pins out. So what it's going to do, it's just going to reset everything here. So you just clear it. All right. Okay. So when your pins have been cleared, you then have to go ahead and click right on this icon here so the icon shows device configuration tool code generation so basically it's after you configure things here you click there it will generate the code based on that now since we've just clear everything we can still go ahead and click there it will generate okay uh all the necessary code configuration for our clearances there okay so it need to do some updating of the configuration tools here so we just give it some times okay that process is done you basically you can see we've got the main files here which already have some code in it as a template but then we come into project explorer if you don't see project explorer here to get it is windows editor i mean windows show views and then you're going to have project explorer okay so if you have it then you come on the source file here now there are some files here that we do not need for what we want to do here so that is basically the system.c uh syscalls system32 that it is basically an interrupt file generation and we want to create our own main file so just go ahead and delete all these files okay you delete them don't worry just delete them okay and you can then create your own main files okay okay so to create our new main file you just come on source new and source file so it will be automatically saved into your main project folder so you just main dot c right then you click finish then it will create a blank man's file with nothing inside so we're going to start from scratch writing the code to control this led with the button then you have to also come into the ink here for the include files and you can also delete the man.h and the stm32f3xx underscore it so this it file is actually where the interrupt files are defined so this one was also generated you can see all the interrupt handlers when we had the previous configuration before we clear the configuration so you delete that okay and also delete the main file why are you going to delete the main that header file because it also have the previous header file definition so we are starting from scratch so let's create our own one so we're going to delete that one also so you have to leave the hal underscore config file because this one here has most of the configuration so you cannot delete it because it is interfacing with the the main file of the system here and also because we are using the hard drivers so if you look at the hard drivers this file here the stm32f3xx hard.h this is the main header file for our board so this file is interfacing with this one so do not delete it leave it there right now you can come now you can come on ink new and then you need to add a new header file right then man that h then it will generate you also a blank new man that h header file okay so now you can come into your man that c file so this is where you need to start writing your code so to begin writing your code first you have to include the header file for your program so the main header file for your ic like i said is this one 
the stm 32 f 3 xxr so you have to call it with a micro include include okay you open double quote stm 32 f 3 xx underscore hal that h all right so the error is gone so this is the file where most of our micros and functions are defined that we're going to be referencing to right so now the main thing is now to create your main program the same as when we've been writing code with the code block ide same as when we've been writing c code with the code block ide so we'll first have the include files for the stdio.h and the lub and then we come here we might be having some uh, variable definition we don't have any variable right now so we can then just create the main program where your c code is running so the program is of type integer the function is of type integer so int main right so the function does not take any parameter then we can just pass the void in there then we open the bracket then inside the main here what do we want to do so this is where all the magics are happening of our main program so inside the main function this is where you're going to run your program now if you look at this program here as i'm pressing the button it's changing the led frequency is i if i hit the black button it's resetting i press there it change it i hit the black button you reset it basically it is running a main loop that is executing all the time when i'm resetting it goes back to the same while loop so which means we have to create a while loop that will execute infinitely so we're going to have while and then to have a while loop that execute infinitely we have to pass a one into the bracket there okay then we have the body of our while loop normally if you write the while loop that will exit after some conditions then you will be passing the condition here so let's say you want the while loop to run so long as x is less than 10 so you're going to then give some condition here to increment x like that so as soon as x become greater than 10 then the while loop will exit but that is not the case here we want the while loop to run infinitely like in this case in this board here okay so while one right 